we've got an article from the Daily Wire, um, and there's a new movement that's happening. <laughs> And this article is by Hank Berrien, and he's covering the reparations movement. And this movement is starting to pick up. You know, you've got more Democratic uh, leaders that are backing this. You've got Cory Booker. You've got Elizabeth Warren. You've got uh, Gillsbrand. They are actually stating that now we need reparations. A lot of people are going to say, it's racist to say no reparations. What I'm arguing for is, is it necessary? And does it solve the problem? When we look at reparations, we look at something that's saying, okay, there was a disadvantage, so now we've got to solve the disadvantage by handing something to them. And I want to say, if, if somebody's demanding something from you as recompense, does that person actually walk away completely satisfied and on new ground with you? They don't. They, their heart hasn't changed towards you. So let's say, let's get rid of all the problems with this whole issue, Let, all, the, all the problems of actually using this solution. Mm -hmm. Let's say this actually works. <coughs> you give the reparations out, and they walk away with whatever money is given to them. Does their heart actually change? No. You know, does, does their heart actually change towards the people who are giving the reparations? No, it won't change. What's the cause for the reparations again? So the cause for this is the feeling that because of slavery, oh, that's right. there, I saw this. there are disadvantages <laughs> that current people have, current African Americans, because of slavery because of the civil rights issue jim crow all of that that there should be some payment because whites in the majority have built economically off the backs of african mm. americans okay and the idea is we didn't have anything you got rich off us so we want payment mm. we we want some money back for this i got you okay when we look at this there's <laughs> you know, there's a myriad of issues with this. And there's a lot of people pointing these out, and I'm, I'm going to be one of those voices. Let's look at problems with doing this. Who's a, who is actually a descendant of slaves and who's not? Do you have to be fully black, half black? Do you just have to have one grandparent? Are Native Americans included in this? because there were times where they were oppressed or they were moved from their lands. Are we going to state that somebody who came to America, who's African-American after slavery, let's say 1975, 1980, they came to America, are they included in the reparations? And who pays the reparations? Is it only people whose ancestors were slave owners? Remember, only about 6% at the height of slavery owned slaves. So just the ancestors of those 6%? Or are we looking at everybody who's white? In that case, who's classified as white? Do the Irish who came in the mid-1800s, do they count? They were oppressed. They were pushed down. What about the Chinese or the Asians? Asians actually have a higher median income than whites do. Oh, wow as well as uh, uh, Middle <laughs> Eastern. So we've got a lot of problems with this issue, but the problem is it's very newsworthy. It's catchy, and it's something that's a platform that can buy voters. You're looking at an issue that's really just there to buy voters. If we feel that reparations need to be paid, what we're really saying is now we've got to sit down and decide a number. We've got to decide who it's going to come from and who it's going to go to. Or are you just going to do blanket? Well, as long as you're at least 50% black, you're getting money. If you're at least 50% white, you're paying money. Is that what we're going to do? 
so in this congressional hearing, it, it, it blew up. Okay. It's a real issue, and it should be, because there's plenty of people coming out and saying this is ludicrous. Um, you had the House Judiciary Committee Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties holding a hearing on Wednesday. It was entitled H.R. 40 and the Path to Restorative Justice, at which witnesses testified about reparations for slavery. H.R. 40 is a bill which proposes a commission to study reparations, and that's where they're going to get you. They're going to say, we're just studying. Hmm. We're, we're just looking into this. If it's allowed to grow, it's not just going to be a study. And it really doesn't matter what the study says. The study could say this isn't going to do anything, and Democrats will just say, well, that study wasn't complete enough. Mm -hmm. We need to do this. Or they'll say it might be insignificant, but it's something we need to do. We had philosophy major Coleman Hughes testifying. Um, he testified for the minority and delivered a lengthy opening statement against the bill in question. After noting that nothing I'm about to say is meant to minimize the horror and brutality for slavery and Jim Crow, and that he considers our failure to pay reparations directly to fee freed slaves after the Civil War to be one of the greatest injustices ever perpetrated by the U.S. government, he went in on the bill for four solid minutes. The audience at the hearing booed Hughes after he said, black people don't need another apology. We need safer neighborhoods and better schools. We need a less punitive criminal justice system. We need affordable health care. And none of these things can be achieved through reparations for slavery. And one of the telling things is that he got booed when saying this mm -hmm. because people said, you don't want me to get paid. I'm not just talking about black people, okay? They're guaranteed there were whites that were booing there too. People were booing because they see a glimmer of hope of getting money out of somebody else's pocket. And Hughes got booed for it. And that's why this concerns me. That's why this issue is, is important to note to you guys that this is going on. If you didn't know, we are now having congressional hearings to study reparations. Is there something that can be done for the minority communities? Absolutely. Is there something we should be paying attention to? Is there something that, that can be done to help end this cycle? Absolutely. And we've got to pay attention to the problems. And we as Christians, which I have another article later in the series, that gives us a solution that, that we as Christians can adopt. 